What the hell is this? Slinky Dog? Etch-a-Sketch? Toddle Tots? Fire Truck? Little Tykes? Mattel? Rated E for everyone? Uh, maybe I should just stop reading what's on the screen and say, uh, welcome to a series. That's what this is, a series. It's more specifically a let's play of a game that's... I, I hesitate to say this is a game from my childhood. It's a game that I played when I was a kid, but it's a game that brought me much pain as a kid. I had a very difficult time playing this game. I thought it was really hard when I was a kid. I got the emulator, I got the ISO file, I figured I'd give it a shot again. Uh, and I, you know, I did play through a practice run of this and I got 100% on the game. So, I mean, it's doable. I don't know how painful it'll be along the way, but, um, so you guys are in for some, in case you couldn't figure it out already, this is Toy Story. More specifically, this is Toy Story 2. And I'm kind of skipping through all of this stuff. Buzz Lightyear to the rescue! Press start. So yeah, when I was a kid, I played this game, and I used to get really pissed off at this game. Like, serious anger issues. So we'll just start level one now. Stealing Woody! Stealing Woody! Oh yeah, so there's like these clips from the movie that they splice in at like super low quality VHS bullshit that's like really, really low quality, but... Anyway, so I figure we might as well just get into the game right now and say, well, jeez, I don't even know how to begin to describe this. So you're Buzz, and just like in the movie Toy Story 2, I'm assuming that everybody has seen that movie. Not quite as good as Toy Story 1, but still not a bad movie by any stretch. Uh, so anyway, you're vaguely following Buzz's path to saving Woody in that movie. So you start out in Andy's room in Andy's neighborhood. This game has 15 levels, and the third level is always like a dedicated boss fight level. So, um, so there's not really anything to do, but the actual objective is to collect Pizza Planet tokens. You know, because Pizza Planet, who doesn't love Pizza Planet? I'm trying to shoot this crib, the locks on this crib down so I can actually get out of here, but geez. Is that my parents? Hang on. I guess it wasn't my parents after all. I think it was just the old creaky apartment being an old creaky apartment. So anyway, what was I saying now? Uh, I think I was talking about the objectives of this game. So, you want to get 50 Pizza Planet tokens. And in every level, aside from the five like main boss fight levels, because the boss fight level is always the third one after two other levels, so, anyway, so there's like ten real levels in the game, right? And there's five Pizza Planet tokens in every single one of them. And they're in a pretty predictable pattern, too. There's one that's like some sort of time attack challenge. There's one that's like a you get by beating a boss. There's one that you get by... I call it the Jinjo challenge, because the, you've got to collect five of something. Just like you have to collect, you know, the five Jinjos and Banjo-Kazooie. And let's see, what else is there? Oh, you also get one if you collect 50 coins, and then give them to uh, Ham, you know, the piggy bank. Uh, so that's kind of what I'm doing now, vaguely. Oh, shit. <laughs> There's, there will be lots of falling in this game. And every time you fall, Buzz will go, No! If you fall from a big enough height. And it's a problem later in levels. I mean, it's it's no big deal. I can go back up there later. I need to get one of the sheep. Because the, uh, the Jinjo challenge in this place is actually collecting five of Little Bo Peep's lost sheep. So we can just head our way. <laughs> head our way? Jeez, man. I guess that 1am is starting to talk. The tiredness. Yeah, I don't know why I'm recording right now. I just kind of kind of got the urge. I finished recording the uh, Oracle of Ages, but I haven't also started that other mystery project yet, so... Which is also... I mean, this is on the PS1. I'm playing this on the PS1. Although I think that they also released, like, an N64 port. I'm not 100% sure about that. 
So that's our first of five sheep. So let's go down and uh, fight the boss now. Ha 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 ha, defeat the ten robot and get a token. So he's gonna like charge at you like an asshole. And all you gotta do is run away from him. And this is like, this is like such a level one boss fight. But you just hit him after he gets tired of chasing you. You can't deal damage to him. And uh, in case I didn't mention it, which I definitely didn't, I'm actually holding square down. Holding my laser down to charge my laser. You know, I'm a charging my laser! Is that what I've resorted to using old memes from like 2006? Jeez, man. So these are what the Pizza Planet tokens look like. And that just so happens to be our first one. So that's just great. But yeah, I mean, they get into a pretty predictable pattern. There's a boss on every level, and the bosses have pretty much no relation to the actual movies. Now, if you get lost and you don't know what to do, you can ask Refs for help. And he'll he'll tell you some stuff. So yeah, some of the other things that you'll find are, like, time attack stuff, which is what he wants us to go do with RC now. Oh, I got a bit of slowdown just there when I blew that robot up. I hope that doesn't happen too frequently. Um, there is, like, a minimum quality setting I need to have on this emulator to even run this game. And as a matter of fact, I actually had to install a whole other emulator just to play this game. Well, I mean, I had to install it to play the other game, too. But they just don't work with the uh, PC emulator, or the, uh, the, the PlayStation 1 emulator that I used for Spyro, which is uh, PCX, or PCSX, I can't actually remember. This is EPSXE that I'm using right now, but anyway, so we're about to do the Time Attack Challenge, which is a racing RC race car dude around the car. It's like a carception. That was actually pretty dumb of me to get hit there. Oh god. If I lose to this asshole, I'm gonna be really upset. So just make sure you jump over the oil slick and don't get hit by any enemies like I did. Because, you know, I'm a fucking idiot. You can also kind of, like, get in front of him. Like, you know, cut in front and detonate. Yeah, he'll slide out on the oil spill right there. And you don't want to do that, like, you don't want to slide on the oil spill either. That's bad. I don't know why, but even though this is, like, nowhere near as epic as the Ocarina of Time race to get Epona, it always reminds me of it. Maybe it's just because, like, the way the line is in the ground and the, you know, just the, the laps and whatnot. So anyway, so that's token number two. So that's two down, three to go. Now, by far, the one where you have to collect five of something is almost always going to be the one that takes you the longest to get in every level. Because they're spread out so far. Anyway, so we're in the garage now. And we're avoiding standard garage hazards, like, you know buzz saws. I guess uh, Andy's parents don't shut off the electricity or anything like that, and they just leave these power drills running all, all the time, so. And we're also working on getting that 50 coins. The 50 coin challenge is almost always the easiest, actually. At least that's what I find. Because the coins are pretty much everywhere in the level, so, and they're not really that hard to get. Okay, now what we actually just picked up is a laser upgrade. And what this laser upgrade allows us to do is basically, it's just a super strong laser. So we can kill enemies really easily now. And that's a good thing. Like, you know these like hoppy dudes that I've been taking a couple shots to kill? Well, now I kill them in one hit with the new green laser. Remember kids, green is good, especially when it's a laser. So, now, now the other thing, you will learn to hate these bars later in the game because it's so difficult to tell to like gauge your distance in the air and like grab the bars there's one in a later level there's actually a few in the later levels really now that i'm thinking about it need some coins here buzz but yeah anyway so we're just kind of going through doing stuff the nice thing about this level in particular is that it's like, you can systematically make your way through it. So that was kind of like a ground pound thing I did there. I guess they're taking a few tricks from the old Mario book. And it's a severed human here! Oh, that's disgusting. But actually, it's something that you give to Mr. Potato Head. 
Now, Mr. Potato Head himself is not in every level. But in the levels that he's in, he'll give you an upgrade that you can use, and you will be able to use that upgrade in other levels, too. And sometimes you'll need to rescue... Or, well, not exactly rescue, but you'll need to, like, find Mr. Potato Head's body part. Did I not get the sheep? Oh my god. I'm too busy trying to explain the game to actually play it. Jeez. But yeah, sometimes you'll need to, like, find a Mr. Potato Head body part in a level that you haven't actually gotten to yet. In order to, to do some... So, like, there's gonna be quite a few levels where we won't be able to do anything until we've completed a later level. And it gets pretty crazy some... I mean, like... The last body part that you get, you don't get into level 13, I think, which is like the second to last level before the final boss fight, so... Anyway, we could go in the kitchen. That's where Bo Peep is, actually. I'm just not even gonna bother with the coins anymore, because you don't get anything for collecting any more than 50. But yeah, I figured I'd save the kitchen for last, since that's where Bo Peep is, and we need to get the last sheep in here anyway. But this is the first power-up that Mr. Potato Head gives you, which is like this invincibility shield thing that lets you get all over this green shit. Which would normally hurt you, and you wouldn't be able to cross it. But now we have to wait for it to run out, because you actually can't jump while you have this thing on. So, anyway, climb the boxes here. No, when I was describing the, uh, all of the, uh, different Pizza Planet tokens you find, you might have noticed that I only mentioned four. That's because there is a fifth mystery token. Yeah, a mystery Pizza Planet token. And basically, the mystery one is just going to be located somewhere in the level. It was probably stupid of me to get that sheep first, because it's kind of on the way out. But the, the thing that we actually have to do in the basement is get that last mystery token, if you will. So, it's cool, because Buzz says things. I mean, like, it's actually very not cool, but he'll... So you'll hear Buzz say, like, I'm Buzz Lightyear, I come in peace. Or, like, other stuff. You'll see that... Or you'll hear that, I should say. You'll hear that throughout the game a lot. So now, actually, so when we... Oh, jeez, I almost fell into the green shit. That would not have been good. So instead of going down this zip line here, what you can actually do is jump over here. Now this game may be kind of shitty in the sense that like the controls can be very frustrating at times. But what I like about this game is that the the levels feel quite big. They they actually do a really good job of that, I think. So I don't think there's any way to uh, get that that token which you can see flashing up there without moving these boxes which is rather unfortunate so we you got to push all of them as and as if it weren't obvious enough with like the big green flashing hand symbol that's like push this you dumb shit they even put it on like a track for you i mean to be fair it is a kids game i shouldn't be judging or anything but all right and now with it we've made ourselves a little staircase to get up here we can grab Pizza Planet token number four. So things are going swimmingly here in Basement World. I think Andy's parents definitely need to clean some shit, because when you have toxic green sludge in your basement, you know it's time for some spring cleaning. Oh, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, actually, but Buzz does have a life bar, and it's the battery. The battery in the upper right corner. And collecting batteries actually will uh, increase your life. Oddly enough, a game that's a platformer and has a life bar also has health tokens in it, I guess you will. So you can hear Bo Peep going like, Buzz, in the corner. Something very annoying about this game is how all the characters call your name when you get close enough to them. But uh, her last sheep, sheep number five, is actually up here. Interesting, I got a bit of slowdown there for... I don't even know why. Dude, fire! Get out of my shit, man. I'm being pretty careless going through here. Which I definitely shouldn't be. The interesting thing about this game is that your health bar actually carries over from one level to the other. 
Like, it doesn't reset when you start a new level. So anyway, we pushed this thing down, and we can actually use this now, if I can, you know, jump on it the right way. Oh, if I can make the jump, that would be nice, but... You're supposed to be able to ground pound it to get, like, extra height, and then you can rescue the sheep. So that's cool. Oh, and Buzz also has a melee attack with Circle, which I don't think I've mentioned before. There are some enemies that you have to destroy with that, so... And that's it. We rescued Little Bo Peep's lost sheep. And that's Pete's Planet token number five. So, so now we can see, get that nice close-up of Buzz's deformed face right there. And you can kind of, like, view your progress here. The power-ups are on the bottom. The Mr. Potato Head power-ups. And, and you can see you got the five Pete's Planet tokens. So that's great! Level one is done! Yeah, I'm not going to save my game because I'm a... Pfft, I don't know. But anyway, next time on Let's Play Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue, we go through Andy's neighborhood. The neighborhood. Neighborhood. Oh, I'm an idiot. Goodbye, thanks for watching.